650 in association with Tom Lucas Productions presents Radio Real Estate. And now, here are your hosts, Bill Macklem, Andrea Jack, and Tom Lucas. And we're all back together again in the open house. Bill, it's great to see you back from the peg. Good to be back, buddy. I tell you, it is good to be back. You look good. <laughs> you look good. You did a nice little rest every now and then. It's good well, for you. Well, it was kind of a awkward weekend because it's certainly trying to visit relatives, but it's also a, a funeral, so that's always kind of a little... Well, thanks for bringing us down, Bill. I'm glad you're so back. Uh, moving right along here on the Radio Real Estate Show. I'm glad you're back, Willie. So tell me about yourself, Miss Jock. What have you been up to this past week? It's been another busy, busy week in yeah. the Tri-City. So lots of exciting new listings coming on the market, and the market's busy. People are selling? Selling, buying. Yeah, it's nice. a great time right now. So we'll talk about more about that. First of all, it's the Radio Real Estate Show. And right off the bat this morning, we thought we'd play the Radio Real Estate, uh, uh, real estate Reality Check. So listen carefully. Where's the money coming from, basically, to buy a home in the Toronto market or Vancouver? Some data in from the Canada Mortgage and Housing Corporation. A lot of home buyers, nearly one in five, are now getting down payment cash from their family as a gift. Now, this is leading to other problems in as much as you've got the money for a down payment, you can get in the market, but then you actually have to pay the monthly mortgage bills. And a lot of buyers are faced with anxiety about potentially not having enough money to meet the monthly demands to afford a new home in the marketplace. Montreal is Canada's hottest housing market right now. The data in for the month of May showing a 15% spike in sales activity in Montreal last month. Some think that you have the foreign buyers tax in BC and now in Ontario, maybe the money is shifting into the Quebec market where it's a lot more affordable to buy into that real estate market. The average price in Montreal right now, just over $360,000. Not bad. Not bad. I remember you could buy a place here, could buy a couple of places for 360000 bucks. Wow. Now it's like barely a condo. No kidding. So I guess we got to move to Montreal now. Yeah. I mean, you could buy a house in Winnipeg for three sixty, dollars and now they're selling for six. dollars And right. Winnipeg is still even part of Canada, as I know. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> as opposed to other places. Moving right along, uh, you are back. I'm glad. We had a song all about you. Billy's yeah. back. Billy, but we'll sing that later. You're the resident mortgage specialist on the program. You will have the mortgage update for us in a few minutes, right? Yeah, I will. Mm -hmm. and, uh, a couple of things I'm going to be talking about later on the show mm -hmm. and can, kind of coincides with what we just heard. Mm -hmm. Have you heard? House prices are rising here in no, the lower mainland. No, Oh, and the other thing is, did you, know, did you know? No. If you drive your car, we're going to have more taxes so you can drive your car and pay for the roads that we've already paid for. I see, but we're not going to be taxed to go over the bridge anymore. Apparently not. Apparently not. Just on the roads leading up to the bridge. I see, okay. Our radio real estate home handyman, Finn Jensen, is wondering if all the old home shows be taken down. And uh, we're going to talk with her dad, right? Good yeah, buddy of yours. Yeah, we're going to talk with Mark Jock. He's, yeah. going to talk with, uh, he's our new home specialist. I think we're going to talk about design today. We're going to talk about some different ways of looking at how to design your home and look at different ways of doing it. You have to have proper people, and Mark will tell us about that, that you have to have the right people to go through the process of not only the design, but then you have to have engineers to check out the design, mm -hmm. and you have to have the architects to check out the, the engineers to check out the design, and then you got to go to the municipality and get... Oh, and that can take forever. Already tired. They are, but you are, <laughs> sure. Radio Real Estate on Smooth and Easy, CIL 650. If you missed one of our segments, please go to the website, which is RadioRealEstateShow.ca, and just download one of the podcasts. That's pretty easy. Monica D. Nabriga, president of Mummy Maids, chats about an environmentally friendly... Oh, man, I love these environmentally friendly stuff. I am making a small book on all these environmentally friendly things. <laughs> anyway, she has an environmentally friendly solution to help keep your kitchen looking and smelling fabulous. Nice. No more sniffing the traps. No? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. Uh, the Radio Real Estate News headlines will be coming up in this hour. I'll be reading the headlines from the stories that made the news this past week. Bill and Andrea will give us her expert opinions. We're also going to be chatting with a, a very special guest of the program about an opportunity which is coming to downtown Squamish very, very soon. Whoa. Yes, so that'll be interesting. Our mortgage question of the week is coming up. If you have a question, please leave it on our website, radiorealestateshow.ca. Okay, we'll do that. Right now, though, Bill is back with us. He's back in the city. He's looking tanned after his little rest there in the Winnipeg area. You have this week's mortgage rate update, Willie. I absolutely do. Rates are still good. Rates are still good. Nice. Hard to get. <laughs> Try, I think we said this earlier. Getting money from the bank is a lot like going out in northern BC and ch chis chiseling away to get gold out of the rocks. The gold is there and you can see it, but to get it out is really tough. Well, getting the money out of the banks, get your financing down on your house, is just about as tough. It's they are the compliance and the, the rules, regulations that they have to undergo 
Uh, unbelievable. I have a client is putting almost like $800,000 down on a $900,000 mortgage or $900,000 purchase. She's got 50 grand. We, we've got cash, uh, extra cash, and um, and we're borrowing $50,000 mortgage, and the guy wants to know where the $50,000 cash is. I show him a statement. He's, no, no, we want a 90-day history. Wow. On a $50,000 mortgage. So the people that apparently that make the rules are not making it so easy anymore. No. <clears throat> is it just for sport, or what is the reason they're doing this? Uh, I, I think that there was a, a mandate from the federal government saying that we want to make sure that we didn't fall into the same trap that the Americans fell into with the dot com and all not the screw not the dot com but certainly the financial crisis they had mm -hmm. on Wall Street. So they want to make sure that there is some pressure from the Feds and I'm, I'm not only the Feds but also the international monetary cycle saying that they're afraid that, that Canada has got a bit of a bubble going on mm -hmm. and so they're trying to make sure that we are prepared for it. So some of the comments that we heard on an intro is not quite exactly true, but okay. you may be getting a gift for your down payment, mm -hmm. but the only way you get that mortgage is if you qualify for not only the mortgage costs, but all the extraneous costs. And the good thing about a gift, too, is apparently you don't have to give a gift back. Exactly. <clears throat> yeah, so in the next segment of the program, Bill will be here. You can just continue to stay around for a while. You'll have the mortgage question of the week. We'll examine the radio real estate news headlines, and we speak with a gentleman that's near and dear to your heart. His name is Mark Jock. He is the CEO of Marcraft Homes. We're going to talk about that new building home process. That'll be interesting, right? Yeah, and some home design. Yeah. You're listening to Vancouver's original on-air open house of Radio Real Estate on CL 650. CL 650. We get letters. We get stacks and stacks of letters. Well, here we are. It's the second weekend of June. People are so happy, Bill, that you have switched over to your summertime sweater. Maybe a couple of weeks ahead of time, but I'm glad you did it. It's a, it's a much looser knit. <clears throat> it is. It's a much looser knit. It's the short sleeves. It's very, very camp. And colorful. Very, to say the least, it's very colorful, too. <laughs> and that rattan you have around there. <laughs> the rat, the rat, the rat, the rat, the rat yes. Look at the rat on it. <laughs> okay, so uh, listen, you've got that sweater on. Are you ready to answer the question of the week? I, I think I'm ready. All right. Our question this week comes from Judy Pixma of Qualcomm Beach. Judy says, with the cost of real estate these days, would it be better to rent? Well, thanks, Andrew. That's a really good question from Judy. You know, it's obviously that she's really thinking about this. And so when you look at the initial aspects of renting versus buying, you know, Renting is kind of like a flat line. It's it's pretty inexpensive. It's it's you know you don't have any cost to, to live in the place other than your normal cable and phone and all that. So you kind of go like, well, it's a lot easier, right? But if you look at buying a place that's three hundred thousand dollars today at a five percent inflation, so we're just taking a very small inflationary rate. In five years, that's worth three eighty five. If you take that three eighty five minus that. $300,000 purchase price, and you divide that by 60 months, your house just paid you $1,400 to live in it. Mm. Whereas if you paid the $1,400 to live in it, so you, now you're in a net loss of about 2800 bucks. So really to, to, to buy is a way is a lot smarter based on what's happening with houses. Same thing on a $500,000 house. In five years at 5%, it's gone up to 541. So you've, you've got a lot of different things that are going on there. So you've got to make sure that you look at it carefully, Yes, there's some costs of getting into it, but the accrued value of the home will more than offset the cost of your rent that you're actually paying to yourself. Yeah. For expert mortgage information online, visit billymac.com. That's Billy with an I, not a Y, mac.com, or call Bill at 604-684-4663. That's 604-684-HOME. Be my baby. Dead dancing right You're now. Dancing. Yeah, nice, 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 nice. Hey, Mark, you dancing? I love that blues. Isn't that a great song? <laughs> I got the home renovation blues. Holy cow. Yeah, well, you know, hopefully it doesn't all become bluesy, you know? Oh, I got a better idea. Instead of having the blues, why don't I just call you and you come over and fix it for me? Right. That's exactly what we'll do. We'll take the blues away and, and make something beautiful for you folks. Well, now, I understand that you had dinner or lunch with Bill, and one of you guys doesn't remember it. I... <laughs> I won't say who, but 
It's the guy. Well, I wonder. I wonder. Flip a coin. Who paid? You paid, so it must have been built. Eh, never mind. I don't know, eh? No. So what's on your agenda for this weekend besides the dinner with the family? I beg your pardon? I said, what's on your agenda this weekend? Well, actually, I'm, we're heading off to the Blue Jays Seattle game tonight. Okay, that's so, a good uh, thing, yeah. Yeah, kind of a, that starts off the weekend nicely. And then, I, unfortunately, I got a little bit of work to do on over, over the weekend. But ne- it never ends. No, no. Right, exactly. Maybe what we should do next week, because next week is Father's Day, as you know. Yeah. Maybe we should make them do something for us. What do you think? Wouldn't that be special? Very special, wouldn't it be? Very special. I'm nice. yeah. be, nice ch- be nice for a change. Oh, hey. <laughs> you know, next week, next week, gang, we're going to have, uh, I'm going to have the pleasure of my partner, Steele, on board, and he's going to be answering some really interesting questions on nice. energy, yes. energy efficiency in a luxury home. Luxury meets energy efficiency. How's that? Eh? Is, there, is there such a thing? I, I, I there, abso- you say- there absolutely is, and we're building one of the first ones in North America. Where are you doing this? Yeah. I'm excited. Oh, We're, in Anmore. In and, Anmore. On Anmore. There's lots of building around there. Some beautiful homes on Anmore. Absolutely. It is it is a, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous neighborhood, you know. And you're only 35, 40 minutes from Vancouver at the max. Uh, and you, you you feel like you're absolutely living in nature. One acre lots. Gorgeous, gorgeous vistas. They're actually branded Anmore as uh, the Hamptons of Vancouver. Really? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, until recently, it, it has been kind of a, a well-kept secret. So we, want, we want to change that, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so what kind of energy things are you thinking about as we're talking about this, uh, Mark? What's that, Bill? What kind of energy-saving ideas have you got? Like you're going to put well, in a, like have, a, a charger a, for an electric car in the yeah. garage? Yeah, yes, absolutely. But we have a solar panel uh, electrical system in here with, a, with the uh, Tesla with the newest Tesla package uh, for uh, for the batteries. And uh, we should be able to take an 8,000 square foot home with a normal, you know, normal family uh, living arrangement here. And uh, you, you, you basically, uh, you won't be paying electrical bills, which is pretty amazing. Wait a second. Did you just say a normal 8,000 square foot <laughs> family? Fam- <laughs> normal family? Yeah, the normal family. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> The okay. luxury of, of larger housing. I understand. We're, sure. make, we're making this foot, footprint ne- negligible, which is very important, you know, with a number of things. Well, exactly. I don't, I don't want to let the total cat out of the bag. I'll let Steel have some time <laughs> when I'm You know, Bill and Acton is sort of going what we're talking. You're going to be actually going through what we're talking about. You're going to be turning that's, down an old place and putting them back together. That's what I think about, yeah. Yeah, we're doing that's that. what so we're awesome. uh, We've got some designs, and uh, Mark's looking at them for us. Just kind of give us a second opinion. It's nice. always good to have a second set of eyes. Yeah. Uh, uh, he doesn't build in our area, so that's okay. So we're, therefore, we're not setting anybody's toes. I don't but, blame him. But uh, <laughs> but it's good to have someone who has his experience to have a second look. Maybe we could all. Th- we could, you know, I'm, what I'm thinking, Mark, is maybe what we could do before you tear it down is we could all go and sit in Bill's patio and do the show from there one Sunday. What do you think? That'd be fun. I mean, that's a nice Wouldn't Sunday. That'd be day? good. I think. Well, I think what we should do is have an on-site meeting, Bill. And, yeah, I think uh, we we need to. I need to see the uh, existing home and and uh, love to give you a second opinion. So, uh, yeah, we'll coordinate that real soon, okay? That would be great. I would appreciate that. You know, Mark, if somebody is thinking about having you to come over and do some work, what, what should they do first? What, what would the process be? Well, you know, we've talked about a lot of things in the last few weeks. We've talked about budget and some soft costs. and some. Uh, we haven't really discussed a lot of hard cost mm-hmm. development because it kind of we're leading up to that. And, and of course, you get, once again, you need to have a proper plan. Uh, by that, I mean you need not just a preliminary plan, but we've got to we've got to get the right people in. That if it's a renovation, major renovation, that we've covered all the all the things that are required. Hazmat remediation. If you want people to will, will be working in a safe environment. Secondly, we want to make sure that that design has been approved by everybody involved, including structural engineers, if required. Then we can cost it out. Um, as far as new housing goes. It's a really interesting process because this is a time when the owner has the has the opportunity of of putting together their dream list, and we, as their consultants, hopefully are involved in that process, and we can give advice as the home is developed, keeping people on track and on budget. 
Because I think, too, Mark, you want to make sure that you're building the right home for the attributes of the lot, right? So if it's a downsloping lot or upsloping lot or take advantage of the views or what are the special We're, features of that property? Right. You know how important it is for having the right orientation of the home to pick up all the sunshine during the day. You want to de- design your house for that. Um, you know, your glazing and windows and, and, you know, your outside area being brought into the inside, all these things that are very important. That coupled with um, energy efficiency, I think, is really the very, very important thing that is, you know, in Vancouver, very soon, uh, are going to mandate uh, there will be no fossil fuels in, in, in home construction. There won't be that mm-hmm. available. So you know, there's going to be more and more solar power going to be more and more things that people should be attuned to. And, and, then, and then the government will start taxing the sun. Of course. <laughs> well, that's a different story for a different day. Okay. Yeah, exactly. I'm sure they've got a, a lease on that one, eh? One thing I did notice, uh, Mark, is that when Andrea speaks to you, she calls you she calls you Mark, and I say, please don't call the guy Dad, and she says, how about Mr. Jock? Is this kind of formal? Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Yoke, eh? Mr. Yoke, yes. Mr. Yoke. Mark, let's, keep it, let's keep it to Mark. Uh, right, okay, Mark, I'll tell you what. Now, somebody wants to talk to you and say, hey, I heard you on the radio. I want you to come over and have a cup of java with me and sit down here talk yeah. about my project. What should they do? Should they give you a call? What's your number? During the week or in the evenings, contact 604-461-2560. Do you have any more at home like Andrea? Here, no. Yes, no. you do. Oh, no. good job. No, she's a, she's one of a kind. I see. Yes, she certainly and, is. And the, and the one at home now is very special. She <laughs> does what she's told for a change, right? Yeah, really. But that's, uh, that's not going to last forever. Either. I hear you. Hey, happy Father's Day in advance. We'll talk to you next week, buddy. Thank you. Okay, Bill. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. Thanks okay? I will do that. Uh, you're on. I'll, uh, I'll make sure that uh, the yeah, refreshments are there and, the, and uh, a couple of sticks. You bet. Let's set it up. That sounds great. Thank okay, you. Guys, have a wonderful weekend. You too, Mark. Hey, coming up, we're going to chat about uh, real estate uh, that made the headlines. We can talk about the radio real estate headline news. We're also going to speak about a very special project called the Lauren, which is coming to downtown, not Surrey, Squamish. Really? Yes, Squamish. That's good to hear. Yeah. This is Bill Macklem, president of Dominion Macklem Mortgages with Andrea Jock, a pinnacle group real estate marketing. The inimitable producer. Dwayne Bishop, and obviously the fabulous Tom Lucas. You're listening to Radio Real Estate on Vancouver's original on-air open house on CL 650. CL 650. Don't have to be a rich man. Could become a rich man, a very well off man. I've got a gentleman who knows all about that. His name is Daryl. He is the development director for performing uh, performing equity. Daryl, welcome to the program. Nice to have you with us today. Hi, it's great to be here. Thank you. Hey, nice to have you with us on board. Now, you folks, first of all, are building a brand new project out in Squamish. Can I ask why Squamish is becoming so popular these days? Well, Squamish is a is a mecca for outdoor activity, so it offers a, a fantastic lifestyle for one thing. Uh, but there's also tremendous job growth. Uh, there's lots of infrastructure development going on, and it's still affordable. It's it's uh, it's really like what the North Shore was 30 years ago. Gotcha. Wow, I've heard that uh, the, the downtown project that, but it's quite a quiet neighborhood as well. Is that correct? Yeah, we are downtown, but we happen to be a few blocks off the the main path, so we have the accessibility of, of being close by, but we uh, we are on a much quieter street. Are you kind of closer to the water side? Yeah, that's correct. Wow. Nice. Anything special about the design? Um, yeah, for sure. We, uh, we're a group that really focuses on uh, financial performance for investors. It's co- sort of part of our corporate DNA. So we always like to make sure our properties are going to perform well for investors. Um, but at the same time, this is a, this is a market that people want to live in for their own home. So our goal is to create units that will rent well, but also they are well-appointed uh, so that a homeowner would love to live there. Sounds great. Now, Daryl, let's switch your attention over to the Lorem, which is coming to downtown Squamish very, very soon. Are you going to be offering these homes at a pre-sale, of course? Uh, yeah, we're starting to build a list uh, this weekend. Wow. Well, when will you start selling them? Um, well, right now we're, uh, we're uh, subscribing our limited partnership. Mm-hmm. So we're fo- focusing on that. They're going to get the first pick of units, anybody inside the limited partnership. And then after that, the general public will will be open for sales 
Daryl, I was just wondering if you could maybe just explain what a limited partnership is to our audience today. Well, we, um, we have people who want to invest in our projects, so they put money into our, our development team, and that money is used as the equity to develop the project. And then when their project is finished, the profits get distributed to the limited partners uh, as well as us as the developers. Is there a preferred return in the limited partnership? Yep. Um, we, uh, we really, as I mentioned, our, our fo- focus is on investors, so we make our uh, limited partnerships very investor-centric. Uh, the first 8% of the, the distributions go entirely to the, the uh, limited partners uh, until they've received an 8% return, and then they get 80% until they have hit um, a 12% annualized return. And there's a few more steps, but ultimately the developer's not participating uh, fully until the investors have received an 18% annualized return. Daryl, I find what you're saying very interesting, and it's got me thinking. Let's perhaps, like, for just a second here that I have, is it 25 grand I have to put into this? Yeah, it uh, can be more, but the minimum okay. is Let's say, let's say I want to put in my $25,000. I want to give it to you guys to invest, but I do not want to move in. Can I do something like that, too? Yep, absolutely. Um, you will just uh, reap the uh, development profits. The money will go back to you. Be uh, tied up for 20 to 22 months until the project is constructed, and then uh, the money is returned along with the profit. And all you have to do is be, of course, of legal age, right? Yes. Okay, let's talk about the Lauren for just a second. It's coming to downtown Squamish. We decided that Squamish was a great place to be. You like Squamish, Bill. I love Squamish. I mean, yeah. they have the wood surface out the back there and yeah. to where they're going to be building. And so so like a lot of people will retire, let's say, from Vancouver, North Vancouver, and go up to Squamish instead of so. m- moving out to the valley sometime, right? Yeah, you're close to Whistler, too. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't you? Well, they're also building a new highway. They're, they're, there's yeah. the, some st- thoughts of putting up uh, some another couple lanes on number one highway from the... Uh, from the uh, Ironworkers Bridge up to, I think it's up to, is it as far as uh, Horseshoe Bay? Daryl, do you know how far the new highway is going to be going up? Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but oh, okay. every bit helps. You sound like a young guy. Are you into skiing and that sort of thing? Um, I'm a young skier. I'm not I yet. thought so. I'm hard in a young skier. <laughs> <laughs> well, I tell you what, Squamish would certainly be the place for it, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Tell me about the Lauren. It's a, it's a pretty modern-looking building going to Squamish. That's for darn sure. Yeah, it is very modern, and uh, we have uh, we have some uh, amenities that we think are, are very practical that people will enjoy. We've got a, a dog wash and car a bike wash station at the ground floor, so that uh, people who really enjoy getting outdoors uh, don't have to bring it back into their unit, and they can leave their equipment clean. Uh, we have a rooftop deck that is really getting exceptional feedback already. And uh, that is a common amenity. Actually, we gave it the best spot in the building. It has a panoramic view from the roof uh, with the chief front and center in the view. We've got fire pits and conversation areas. There's even uh, rooftop gardens for people to be able to uh, plant uh, their own herbs and vegetables. Wow. Daryl, I was talking with Ross yesterday, and he said you have a couple of different style of units, one more for the millennials and one maybe for the baby boomers. We're thinking about lock and leave, let's go, let's uh, get a nice place up there in Squamish, and let's get the hell out of Dodge. <laughs> Honey, what do you think? <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we, we have uh, and people who are already investing with us who want to pick their loft unit. We have some pretty spectacular uh, penthouse units that have a loft and, and two-story windows taking in the view. Uh, but then we also have um, very compact studios and one bedrooms, two bedrooms, and those perform well for first-time buyers or investors who want to optimize the, uh, and capitalize on the rent, uh, the, the need for rental accommodations in the area. And at the Lauren, you're, uh, you're priced competitively, right? Absolutely. And, and once again, those uh, limited partnerships are available, but they're, they're running out fast. Yeah, we're mostly subscribed. Uh, we're just finishing off going through the list of the people who expressed interest. Um, so if people want to participate, they should check us out. Well, uh, do you have a phone number for there, uh, Daryl? Um, we would uh, direct you to our website, investinsquamish.ca. Investinsquamish.ca makes a lot of sense. Investinsquamish.ca. Bill's got that down on his computer already, so that's wonderful. So good luck with the Lauren, and we'll be talking again real soon. Great. Thanks for your time. Daryl, thank you for being with us. Daryl is the development director for Performing Equity, and they've got this great place called the Lauren, which is coming to downtown Squamish very, very soon, and limited partnership, so you oh, can make some great. bread. Well, and they, they've got the, the Sea to Sky uh, gondola there. It mm-hmm. goes up to uh, the uh, mountain that's uh, next door to the Chief. 
So that Nascot, and they got a they got a great walkway on the top of the thing. I guess a great area. I know where we're going to be doing the show from. First of all, from your deck, and then we're going to be going up to Squamish, right? Exactly. It's time now for the Radio Real Estate Headline News. I'm going to read some stories. Bill and Andrea will tell us the real thing, what they really think. It looks like affordability has eroded in the suburbs. A recent housing report shows affordability has dropped by more than 30%. That's out in the burbs? Come on. Well, yeah, it really starts with a ripple effect, right? So it's because, you know, downtown West Vancouver, the prices are super high. Then all of a sudden, those people are getting a lot of money for their property. So then they went to North Van, which mm-hmm. pushed the prices up in North Van. Then the buyers from North Vancouver said, oh, hey, why don't we go to Port Moody? It's pretty similar to North Vancouver. So all of a sudden, Port Moody started getting a lot of So it's that there. ripple effect. Yeah, and then now people from Port Moody are moving out in the Tri-Cities, out to Maple Ridge, and out to Mission in Abbotsford. So and I was out in Chilliwack good. last week, and I noticed, too, that with that ripple effect, it's true what you're saying, because yeah. it's getting there's more and more building going on yeah. for the reach to go, and Absolutely. the homes are getting more and more beautiful. They're getting more and more expensive. Exactly. One more step, and I would have been in Winnipeg with you. There's some... Oh, oh, and that would have been good. Yeah, because we can <laughs> afford to buy there. No. Oh, no, no. Forget I said that. It's Radio no. Real Estate. We're doing the headline news right now. The city of Vancouver has unveiled its new park concept. A new space will bloom. <clears throat> Sorry, the viaducts are going. The flowers are coming. What do you think? You're shaking your head, Billy. It's amazing. <laughs> so every municipality gets money from the, the provincial government based on the gas tax. And so every municipality gets a portion of that because of the roads that they've got in the municipality. What I don't understand is that if you take down roads and put them into bike lanes or take down bridges and convert them into parks, why are you still getting the same money on the gas tax as if now that you reduce your your roadway system by a third or a quarter? Like, this makes no sense at all. Yeah, it's great having parks and all that, but you know what? You have to have ways for people to get there. And we're not talking about people just in the... Vancouver City proper. We're talking about how do you get them from Port Moody? Yeah. Mm-hmm. How do you get there from well, Chilliwack? The Sky Train. Chilliwack doesn't have one. Oh, okay. South Surrey doesn't have one. Eventually. Langley doesn't have one. So what we're doing is we're, we're, we have people doing things in isolation. It's not a team approach at all. It's one person that wants to do this at the expense of his own city because he's trying to keep his tax base in the city. Well, it seemed that on the other hand, the locals have something to say about this. They're kind of skeptical. They have a few questions they like answered. Well, <clears throat> people aren't dumb. No. No. People are not dumb. They, they want to know see what's, going, what's on. going on. And they're a little concerned because you know what? After the third bicycle lane, you've got some problems. And why wouldn't you develop a bicycle lane alongside a major thoroughfare? So if Canby is a major thoroughfare for cars, mm-hmm. maybe you should step over one one block and make that a bicycle lane. I think we're forgetting one important thing here. What's that? I don't think they want us to take our cars into the downtown core anymore. Well, there's not even a gas station. I think there's the one, there's one. one gas one. station remaining. Yeah, for now. For now. But how about all those people who have businesses down there? They're all, you know what's going to happen? They're going to move out to Surrey because Surrey is the fastest growing city in the Lower Mainland, mm-hmm. in South, fact, almost in Canada. Sure. And they're going to be bigger than Vancouver. All those businesses that are currently in Vancouver are going to move to a place that's more amenable to what they want. All right, now here's a place you might want to move to, the Sunshine Coast. There's a group over there. They aim to build those little tiny, teeny, weeny houses. I love the Sunshine Coast. For the homeless. So what do you think? It's a great place. Yeah, it is. And I took a look at that article, and, I mean, those are cute little homes. I mean, mm-hmm. I think the more we can help, the better. Bill. <laughs> well, Bill likes Bill likes to spread out. Yeah. I, I'm going along with a gentleman called Mark Jock who thinks yeah. that an average family home is eight thousand <laughs> square feet. I, I don't have eight thousand square feet. Let me just let me make that really abundantly clear. But you know what? There is a place for tiny homes, but there's a place for better planning. Right. And until you have one municipality looking after the whole Lower Mainland and one mayor looking after the whole Lower Mainland, you're going to have 37 mayors trying to make a decision on how they're going to solve this problem when they don't even have the funds to do it. There's a story in the newspaper this past week about this uh, this fellow and his wife, this married couple that actually lived in a tiny home for a couple of years and they were finally given the old nickname from the government. We should have them on the show and talk to them about it. I think it. we should. It would be kind yeah. of interesting. And finally, um, the West End's landmark. It's, have you ever been to the Sheridan, the landmark up there? They're, they're oh, yeah. Russia? It's coming down. I Four, heard that. 42 stories is coming down. I heard what? that. Guess what they're going to be building? Subsidized housing. Condos, yes. <laughs> Subsidized housing. So 42 floors. Wow. So, uh, I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm a taxpayer, so... Yeah. I can't live in downtown Vancouver. No. So what am I going to do to become subsidized housing so I can live in a in a, in a home downtown Vancouver? <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, what you, can, do? you and I will talk a little later on. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, 
No, I'm not sorry. Bill, thank, <laughs> thank you for sharing sorry, with us. Sorry, not sorry. Not, not so sorry. It's Radio Real Estate on Smooth and Easy, CIL 650, and uh, we've got a whole bunch more show coming up, don't we, Bill? Yes, we do. Yes, we do. In our next okay. segment, Monica Dino Briga, president of Mummy Maids, talks to us about an all natural, made at home, environmentally friendly cleaning solution that promises to keep your kitchen running smoothly and looking great. This is Bill Macklem, president of Dominion Macklem Mortgages, with Andrew Jock of Pinnacle Group Real Estate Marketing, producer Dwayne Bishop, and Tom Lucas. You're listening to Radio Real Estate on CL 650. CL 650. A little bit of Monica in my life. You know, I was just thinking, if you had a lot of Monica in your life, you'd probably be one of the cleanest people around. <laughs> you'd certainly be smelling good. Oh, you'd certainly be smelling good. It'd be eco-friendly. Yes. Probably a made-at-home solution to your stinking she'd take care of. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, she wouldn't smell bad anymore. Monica's with us. She is the uh, the head person over at Mommy Mates. They do a wonderful job. What's on your mind today, Monica? Areas where food is stored or prepared have more bacteria and fecal contamination than other places in your home. More than 75% of dish sponges and rags have salmonella, E. coli, or fecal matter, compared to 9% on bathroom faucet handles. Now that's kind of scary. Some of the kitchen items that need frequent cleaning are your cutting boards. You should use a number of cutting boards for specific jobs. For instance, one for chicken, one for vegetables, etc. Your coffee maker. Wash after every use and let it dry before reusing. Your refrigerator, especially areas in contact with uncooked and unwashed food. Clean regularly and wipe all spills right away. Your kitchen sinks and countertops. Wipe them down with warm soapy water or disinfectant after each use. Use disinfectant wipes on the faucets, refrigerator, surfaces, and countertops. Heat damp sponges in the microwave for a minute to kill bacteria. Soak sponges in a quarter of warm water and a half a teaspoon of concentrated bleach. Change dishcloth a few times a week. Wash your hands before and after touching or handling food. To keep safe, this is Monica Dinabriga for Radio Real Estate. Mummy Maids will clean your castle with no hassle. Call Monica at 604-533-4959, 604-533-4959. Or visit mummymaids.com. That's mummymaids.com. I uh, I wasn't going to mention this, but now, what the heck, I'm going to. <laughs> um, as you know, uh, as you know, a little while ago, I was unfortunate enough to have to spend time in the hospital. Yes. Okay. So I go uh, downstairs to the to the restaurant, and there is this person there accepting money. This person is wearing gloves. Okay, that's great. This person is also touching the food that I'm eating with the same gloves that she touched money with. Oh. I'm thinking that's not such a good idea. No. Okay, I feel much better now. So <laughs> tell me about the Tri-Cities. Tri-Cities. We are located in Port Moody, Coquitlam, and Port Coquitlam. Mm -hmm. and How far is that from know? downtown? Uh, downtown, depending on traffic, you know, is 40 minutes, I'd say. Okay, and what, like what kind of things are around there that would make it attractive for me to like to move there, say, Ooh, from so Surrey? From well, the drive-in is all on the river. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. And we have a beautiful ocean and lots of hiking trails and biking trails. And Port Moody offers lots of opportunities for you. Actually, even Coquitlam and Port Coquitlam, lots of... Um, is there a lake there? Uh, yeah, we have Bunsen Lake, White Pine Beach. There's Minicata Park in Port Coquitlam. Say it again. Minicata Park. How big is that? Oh, on, it's very small. It's pretty, Mini. No, it's it's beautiful. I don't have the exact details, no, no. but but it's um, big. It's big. Yeah, it's a beautiful hiking trail, and you can actually even walk along the dikes of uh, Port uh, Coquitlam all the way to Pitt Meadows. So it's quite beautiful. People ride their horses. So yeah, I mean, there's so much to do in the Tri Cities. Coquitlam offers a fabulous rec center, a huge hockey rink, uh, gym, swimming pool. Uh, you know, there's just tons of. Oh, you know, we're very community based. You know, each mayor has a great personality. Everybody gets along, and there's lots of fun. You know, banter between the mayors, and you know, the communities are always offering something different. You know, each weekend there's events and lots of things happening in the Tri Cities. Always. So it doesn't really matter what age you are out in the Tri Cities. Yeah. There's always something going on for you. Yeah. We have lots, you know, there's lots of different people living in the Tri-Cities from first-time homebuyers, single people, couples with families, um, people that are retiring or wanting to move maybe to Belcara because of the ocean views and dock share potential. And Last week, you were telling me a little bit of a secret. 
Are we able to share that secret with the audience this morning? Yes, I had yeah? a few secrets, okay. but... Um, well, yeah, I know, but, you know, be ready to the show. <laughs> I know, I meant that, but I meant a couple of listings coming on the market. So uh, we did just list a beautiful $1.9 million property with spectacular ocean views stretching all the way from Bedwell Bay right down the inlet. It's a renovated home. The, the landscape, it's on an 18,000 square foot lot. It looks like better homes and gardens. Wow. So, yeah, the gentleman uh, works with Art Knapp, so you can imagine oh, how really? beautiful the landscape Landscape is so we're have a, we have an open house there actually uh, next Sunday and we just finished one today uh, so it was very busy lots of good potential good. and then next week I have a really exciting cute uh, uh, townhouse coming on the market Polygon's former show home Bar- at Barrington Park in Burke Mountain right across from the park and it's interesting this is the only listing on the market between seven and eight hundred thousand right now so I anticipate multiple offers hey you do know that next Saturday of course is Father's Day your Saturday dad or Sunday Sunday Please. Sunday next That's Sunday is, is, I'm sorry if I said Saturday, but next Sunday is Father's Day. I think of something really special. So your dad, Mark, Mark Jock of uh, Markcraft Homes, is of course a father. Bill, you're a dad. Yeah. I am. I'm a dad. Dwayne is, well, he's a ner- little nervous. Well, Are he is, but he's just at home. No, no, oh, no, no. Might- Not that he knows of. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe uh, something. Uh, what should I do, you guys, for something, dad? Uh, there's something know. for us. I don't know. Something special. Like the pressure's what? on now. Jeez, I don't know. I know. Just Show up in time, know your lines, collect your dough, and away you go. <laughs> oh, very good. What You're else is bold, coming up? You in don't the, know it. Yeah, my feet show other long fellows. Coming up in the next segment of the program, Billy. Uh, I tell you, <laughs> you know, being here is one of those special things. So chatting about <laughs> next time on the next part of the show, we're going to be talking about, oh, did you hear house prices are rising? No, I didn't hear about that. Exactly. Really? It's happening. And True story. did you know that you might have to pay more tax? For driving your car. No. Yeah, nothing on the bridges. No. The bridges are free. Of course. But to get there, you're going to have to pay more money. I see. Really? Yeah. Like it sounds like this. Yeah. Hmm. Oh. <laughs> this is Henry Jock of Pinnacle Group Real Estate Marketing with Bill Macklem, President of Dominion Macklem Mortgages. Producer, stop. Stop. No, I was just worried that you looked into the mirror and you didn't see your reflection. <laughs> Producer Dwayne Bishop and Tom Lickis. You're listening to Vancouver's original on-air open house, the Radio Real Estate Show on CL 650. CL 650. Guess what? You'll be getting a little surprise when your realtor comes over and says, how much do you think my house is worth? $300,000? Oh, it'll be silly. A little more? A little, a little more. more. Yeah. More? It's amazing. Well, a lot more is right. Prices are starting to shoot up again, huh? They have caught up to almost where they were last year. So how do we get ahead of this game? Sell a move east. No. No? I mean... I was, I was seeing some, uh, some clients last night. Mm-hmm. And they're first-time home buyers, and they're getting a little bit of help from mom and dad because that, that is the way that a lot of the first-time home buyers are doing mm-hmm. it, particularly when they get into the, the more expensive homes because you want to have uh, 20% down if you possibly can. So we were just talking about what you're going to do. Well, you better make sure that you've got a realtor like you have with Andrea Jock. You want to make sure that your realtor knows the market. Absolutely. You know, you've got to know the market. So if they're listed for 600 if you're paying attention to what's going on in the marketplace, you know the final offer is not going to be six hundred. And so if there's, you're there's no supply, if you're a first time buyer too, and you're working with somebody like Andrea, I think part of your duties would be Andrea is to like inform these people about what it really costs to buy a home. Like, guess what? You are going to have to pay for your milk now. <laughs> Guess what? You are going to have to pay for your electricity now. Yeah. Right? Well, absolutely. And, you know, working with a great uh, mortgage specialist like Bill, it's fantastic because I sit down and have a preliminary meeting with our first-time home buyers. but I really do make sure that I send them to someone qualified like Bill to sit down to make sure they really understand mm-hmm. all the costs and everything involved. Oh, yes. It's, yeah, and you got to go through the details. So you need to know that you're going to be going in. You better be prepared to pay more. The question is, is how much more? All right, I have, a, I have an answer to that. Okay, cool. So, you know, I take my clients through a process because at the end of the day, when you're in a multiple offer situation, it really, comparables are out the window. You can't look at what the last home sold for because it really is going to come down to how much someone loves that home. And who knows, somebody might come and pay 50, 60, 70,000 more just because they want it. So what I always do with my clients, say that property is 350. I'll say, Bill, if you found out that property sold for 385, how would you feel? 
Exactly. And if you tell me, well, Andrew, I'd feel a little disappointed. I probably would have been, well, then you got to start there. Well, how would you feel if it sold for three ninety? Oh, no, Andrew, I'd, you know what? I don't care. We'll let that one go because I would never pay three ninety. So when a multiple offer, that's how you kind of get a sense of where the, someone's comfort level is. The problem you come into, though, is that what they don't realize is let's say that that three ninety they wasn't were comfortable with, and three eighty was, and it sold for three ninety. Guess where the next one starts at? Oh, always higher. So we- I go from rags to riches. <laughs> Pretty much, huh? Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. Say you can. Scary situation we're talking about here today in the show. Prices going up. What do you do? Very what do you do? It's hard. It's hard to. First time buyers? Yeah. It's a lot of loopholes when you go and buy property for the first time. It's, it's difficult to. It's difficult. I mean, it's difficult. Never before have we seen this kind of market this continuous. Well, you both well, work, you both work with both, right? I mean, you work with first timers and, yeah. and, and last timers, if you wish. What sort of questions are they asking you, the first timers? Well, actually, that question. You know, I just met with some first time home buyers on um, last last Saturday, and they said to me. You know, Andrew, we, we want to wait. I think we want to wait till the fall to see if, you know, maybe things slow down. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm getting this sort of question. Do you think things will slow down in the fall or are we going to see this market continue the way it is? You get the same yeah. questions over at Dominion Michael mm-hmm. Mortgages? We do. And so you say to people, so by the time you find out that the prices have fallen, they're up again. The prices are starting to go up exactly. again anyways. Exactly. And the thing is, you're not buying a house to be as a stock. Exactly. This is your home. Thank you. So guys. yes, if it drops, so let's see you buy today and it drops by 2% or 5%. Look at the chart. We just talked to the station director this morning mm-hmm. and he said, look at the city of Vancouver today and look at this and just the skyline and look at the skyline of the city of Vancouver in 86 mm-hmm. and how different head has come. Mm-hmm. So if you think that prices are not going to continue to rise over the next 20 years, then you probably shouldn't be in the marketplace because yeah. you're not paying attention. But if you if you look at what's going on in the marketplace and you know prices are going to rise because of the lack of supply and more demand and everyone wants to live here, then you should get in whenever is the best time for you. You find the right home that suits your family's needs and you stay long term and you won't lose. My my father in law, God rest his soul, used to say if you're in real estate for the long haul, he says you cannot lose. Exactly. Now let's go back to the mid nineteen eighties. Yes. You remember that? Yes. Remember a thing called Expo 86? Yes. The world came to British Columbia and did not go home. Oh, no, my oh, goodness. Oh, they're, uh, and people are still coming here. And I use different ways to, to give examples to people because, you know, most of us, we buy our one home. Doesn't mean we're realtors, doesn't mean we're mortgage brokers, doesn't mean we're appraisers. We only buy this one place. So we have to depend on people who actually are in the market. They they play this game all the time. They gotta know what's going on. And so you try to get people's attention, just try to show them what's going on. So I'll use the example of like back in my daughter lived in down the States in Nisqua, which is just across from uh, from uh, Bellevue. And so when I would go down there to me an hour. Well today all those towns that we went by that were just assigned are now towns that come right up to the highway and you have to slow down. What? You don't <laughs> slow down? You go right past them? Oh, you them. have to slow down. You oh, have you have to, to slow down. down. I see. Somebody wants to get some information for you to be on the phone. What just number can they call? Just give me a shout at 604-684-4663. That's 604-684-HOME. And you've got a wonderful office with cookies and coffee? Absolutely. Brick and mortar? And, uh, we, have some, we, have, we have ways to welcome you into our home. All right. I'm looking forward to that. Hey, Finn Jensen is back. He's uh, down from the roof. He's going to talk about those old homes. And should we be tearing them down? This is Bill Backlund, president of Dominion Mackle Mortgages, with Andrea Jock of Pinnacle Group Real Estate Marketing, our producer, Dwayne Bishop, and the illustrious Tom Lucas. You're listening to Radio Real Estate on CL650. CL650. Radio Real Estate on CL650. I'm feeling the cracks that ran through the door and kept my mind from wandering. I believe the gentleman is down from the roof. He's back from his Grand Charles High School graduation. What? Was any of your grandkids high? No. No. No, They're not that old. Scary. No. Well, maybe they are, but we're not. Anyway, Finn Jensen is here. And Finn, you got a story to talk to us about today. Good afternoon, Tom, and good afternoon, everyone. The idea of knocking down old buildings is repugnant to some people, whereas to others, it's a necessary process in order to provide space 
for the construction of efficient designs that will accommodate multiple families and businesses. Developers are ever searching for the ideal property to redevelop into denser accommodations. Available land is scarce, so something has to give. Not all old buildings are worth preserving, many of which have outlived their usefulness and are not of any architectural interest, but are occupying valuable land that could provide many families with a home. In areas outside the city center, there must be numerous potential sites where a redevelopment would be a perfect choice. But there are considerations that need to be taken into account, such as infrastructure. Larger developments require upgraded services that are expensive and intrusive to install. And that alone can determine the speed and location of any redevelopment. So while building for families is a continuing endeavor, it seemingly cannot advance as quickly as anyone would like. But the future is clear. Building homes and businesses is a priority. This is Vin Jensen for Radio Real Estate. Talk to you next week. For your seasonal maintenance, call Gentech Mechanical Installations. 778-378-2740. That's 778-378-2740. Ask to speak with Finn. He's not up in the roof. He'd be glad to talk to you. Well, he's using that telephone made out of the tin cans. You know, oh, with the long cans. string? Long string. It really works well, doesn't it? Especially when he's on the roof. Oh, my goodness. It's Radio Real Estate on Smooth and Easy, CRL 650. Bill, what's your telephone number if somebody wants to get a hold of you during the week to talk about mortgages? 604-684-4663. That number again? Some people use the 604-684-HOME. Oh, okay. I like that one. 684-HOME. Yes. Go see Bill, who gets into a home. Exactly. And if yeah. you want to move out to the Tri-Cities, you go see Andrea. Right. My goodness, there are lots of people moving, lots of building going on out there? Lots, lots of new construction. We have a new development coming out in Burke Mountain by Polygon in the, I think, end of summer. I'm going to do some more research on. and um, A lot of units? Or? Yeah, a townhouse development. So How many do you think? Oh, I'll have to find out for you guys and get okay. back to you. Because right now, there's only one listing between seven and 800000 That will be mine coming on the market on Monday. So I'll keep you guys posted on the activity. Will you share it with us next week? Yes. Okay. Uh, we will. I'll, sure. I'll bring a brand new pen <laughs> and a piece of paper. And the open <laughs> houses will be next Saturday and Sunday, 1 to 4. Okay. It's a three-bedroom, 1,300 square foot. I think it's 13. 13- 50, uh, three bedrooms, nice grass area, park across the street. It was the former show home, so there's lots of great upgrades and features. So make sure you can. Somebody wants to get a hold of you by telephone? What do they call? What oh, number? 604-783-3124. 604-783-3124. Well, it's time to take down the open house signs. You know what that Ooh, means? I'll put them in the back of the van. Would you? Would you mind? Yep. Thank you very much. Can you help carry mine, too? They're yeah, heavy. Well, I clean out the back of the van, so I've got lots of room. <laughs> next Saturday, or next Sunday, I keep saying Saturday, next weekend, next Sunday is Father's Day. Yes. So you have to do something nice for us because we're all dads. That's right. And Dwayne's working on it. I'm there. <laughs> no, just kidding. There. I'm getting Aww. you in trouble. I, I'm sorry. I shouldn't do that. I'm just kidding about Dwayne. Thank you for being here, Andrew. Thank you for having me. Bill, thank you, sir, for coming Always back. a pleasure to be here, bud. Dwayne, thank you for keeping us on the straight and narrow. Thank you. Thank you for listening, and we'll talk to you tomorrow morning at 6 o'clock on the radio. Until then, it's Tom Lucas saying have a smooth and easy night. Thank you. Bye.